I have always been interested in cars. One of my favorite cars growing up was the Lamborghini Countach. I thought it was the epitome of cool. Who didn't have this car on their wall growing up? Cars are very special to me. I feel that it is design or space in motion, and I think it really captures the technology and the values of society at any given point. Now, we all know what these are. These are the products that we own, that we carry with us every single day. And something that's curious about these is all of these are mobile. Everything that we have in our life is mobile, besides our buildings. Now, we all understand this. Buildings are heavy. They have a ton of pipes and wires and things that need to be connected to the ground. But what if we could take our buildings with us? What if you can move your kitchen with you when you moved across country or take it on a road trip? What if you could lease your living room and get a new one in three years? What if you could sell your kitchen on Craigslist? What if you could online configure your, your bathroom on Amazon or Best Buy and order it on Apple? And what if your bedroom could be delivered to your doorstep? All this is possible with the cartridge concept. The cartridge concept is taking all those complex components in our home and consolidating them into discrete pieces. And this is what we're doing at Virginia Tech. So we have a plan. Everyone understands what this is. We break down each room into what the essentials are in each room, and we only build those components. It's a little hard to see on the screen, but we kind of take each component, build that, and then ship it to your home. So with that, we've come up with a suite of cartridges at Virginia Tech. We have a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room with audiovisual capabilities, and a bedroom that can convert itself into an office, as well as many others. All of those are then shrink-wrapped, we like to call it gift wrapping, and then they are delivered to the site. And the way that we approach this is a little bit different than conventional construction. We consider this building uh, from the inside out rather than the outside in. All of this is possible through the idea of automated manufacturing. So typical homes now are built piece by piece on site. We're looking to industrialize that. During my undergraduate thesis, I had the pleasure of uh, reading a great article, and a good quote from that was, the factory is the architectural manifestation of change in the society. And this really is true. If you think about it, everything that we own, everything really in this room was built in a factory, but our homes. This is the modern house. This is the way homes have been built forever. Now, if we take a look back, we can see that in 1900, Cars and homes were built the exact same way. It was a singular craft. By 1913, Henry Ford had invented the assembly line method. With that, uh, it allowed for all of our products to be made in a much more innovative way, while the homes remained the same. By 2004, car production moved to a modular production and lean manufacturing, which is the elimination of waste from a production, while, car, or, while homes were still built piece by piece on site. Now, you might be saying, Bobby, there are already prefabricated homes. How is your concept really any different from those? Well, there are two different types of modular uh, manufacturing right now. One is on the lower end. Everyone's familiar with the double-wide trailer. And another one is taking a home that's already been designed and then slicing it into pieces that can be shipped down the road. Now, at Virginia Tech, we take a little bit of a different approach with this. Instead of designing a home and then going back retroactively and figuring out how to put it together, let's design those pieces from the beginning. We've been talking with many different manufacturers, many different production home builders, and they are saying, we don't have the skills we used to. We're having a hard time, especially with the next housing boom, how do we keep up? Our proposal is you move that workforce into the factory setting. Each worker has his own station or her own station, and they're able to add value to that cartridge. You lower your costs, you increase your quality, there are no more weather delays because you're inside, and this allows for a better overall product. So the way that we think about this is we design from the cartridge from the beginning. You take those pieces, and if you look at that floor plan, you really realize that only 30% of it is stuff. The rest of it is just air. You really begin to th think about, what am I actually paying for in a home? So we've begun to prototype this. At Virginia Tech, we built a home in Charlottesville, Virginia where UVA is, and we started by assembling that uh, in a warehouse facility in Charlottesville. We then packaged all those components up and then brought them to the site. 
They were assembled using a crane or a forklift, depending on their size. And we went from slab to this in under eight hours. It was finished uh, ahead of schedule. We sold it for a profit and ended up winning the State of Virginia AIA Design Award. Now, Virginia Tech has a long history of modular housing. We've pre-competed in four different solar decathlon projects, and this was the last one we did, the 2010 Lumen House. With this, we started to think about the idea of flexible space. So as we consolidate those pieces in the home, how can we then transform our space to make it adapt to our lifestyles? So if we have a kitchen, you're able to expand that countertop out. That singular kitchen is now a galley kitchen. Then after you're done preparing your food, it can become a serving bar for your guests. If the day is nice, you can open up all the doors and allow that space to really flex from the inside to outside, moving that dining experience to the outside. In the bedroom, it can start off as a secondary living space throughout the day, and then the bed is able to fold out to make a bed at night. Now, there are very little internal doors to this home, and you're wondering, Bobby, how is this a private bedroom? I'm not going to sleep there. Well, we thought about this in a little bit of a different way. If you take a storage solution, you can then move those apart. That visually separates them from the rest of the home while maintaining its storage function. We've also collaborated with a few production home builders, one being uh, KB Homes. We did a house with them at the 2016 Green Build Conference in Los Angeles. And with this, we, we looked at it in a little bit of a different way. How can we consolidate that flexible space into one singular cartridge? How can it do a lot of the legwork? So if you'll notice, there is an audiovisual wall that separates an office space from a living space. It can then convert into a bedroom and then back. We can reconfigure the living room, and you'll notice there's a screen that begins to pivot. It can then pivot around, so technology is able to follow you throughout the day. You can then fold the doors in. It becomes a standalone piece of furniture. You can push it all the way back if you're entertaining for that night. You can reconfigure your space. This is it in action. You have a high-definition print on one side, a beautiful image print on the back of Corian glass and then that's able to then spin itself around. All the wires, all the complex technologies are contained within that pivoting mechanism, and then there's a display that's revealed on the other side. Now, we've taken this idea. I said we've done previous solar decathlon projects. We are now competing in the 2018 Solar Decathlon Middle East competition in Dubai. We're actually the only United States team to uh, be present, so we're very excited to represent the USA. And we're thinking about this methodology, uh, future house methodology and applying it to this as well. How can we break down the home? As we have to ship the home from Blacksburg to Dubai, how is that going to be easy? How can we plug everything together? How is it better? So over the past five years, as Nick mentioned, we've worked on a concept called the future house. We have prototyped all of these elements. We have a kitchen that's all about the Internet of Things and how we interact with each surface and how that can bring us all back together. You have a bathroom space, which is all about understanding how a space can transform itself to really work for different users in the home. How can the bathroom also clean itself with new materials, and how can it adapt? We have a living room, which is all about understanding the psychology of lighting in the space. So all the lights in the room are able to tune themselves to a specific task and also have an immersive audiovisual experience. We started looking at the bedroom, but how can we push that even further? Instead of just for the home, how can this be applied to healthcare facilities, to aging in place concepts in elderly care facilities, or even for veteran affair hospitals? Go around to the other side, how do you look at a flexible space? It can start off uh, with an office during the day and then convert itself into a bedroom at night when a guest comes over. Taking that uh, storage concept one step further and allowing that concept to flex back and forth between two different spaces. You have a conference room on one side and then a dressing room on the other side. All of those come together and they form a really beautiful home. More recently, we've been looking at how do we actually apply this in a smaller sense. This video that I'm showing you now is about how we can renovate a home. Let's say I, I mentioned before you can renovate your kitchen. Okay, you come in over a weekend, you can demo a part of your kitchen, you can build it in an offsite factory transfer it down to wherever you're building, and then slide it in. This is a little bit of the demo here. This is them sliding that cartridge into place. You'll notice that it doesn't have a top because there's a front door. 
we're very easily able to cut that at a certain line, have it be a convertible, is what we call it, and then bring it into place and install. Now, conventional construction isn't always perfect, so we allow this to slot into place, and then you have trim pieces on the side, which we scribe in the field so that it perfectly matches your new kitchen. Some additional finishing work, just installing some of the cabinets that, uh, that travel with it, installing some of the plumbing as well, laying down that tile, and you have a finished product Monday morning. The idea with this is, let's say, this was a house in Florida. You could take your kids to Disney World for the weekend, you come back, and you have a new kitchen. This takes that uncertainty of how long is this going, how as long is the contractor going to be in my home? How much more is it going to cost? That's eliminated now. You order your kitchen online, you know exactly when it's going to be delivered, you know exactly how much it's going to cost, and you have a brand new space. Everyone has been living in the United States now, and we've all been in some way affected by the terrible natural disasters. Um, what we're looking at to do now is take this concept and apply it to a disaster relief situation. So at Virginia Tech, we've come up with a disaster relief concept. It ships eight feet wide, 12 feet long, and eight feet tall. It gets delivered by a forklift. So the goal is to have these already stationed around the United States. When disaster happens, they get deployed. We set this up behind our architecture building in Blacksburg, Virginia, with a group of high school students who are visiting from out of town. And in under two hours, with a family of four, there are a few more in this just because there were more people, but a family of four is able to get themselves back into a home. It's a fraction of the cost of a FEMA trailer. The current FEMA trailer is $165,000. And we're trying to make this for under $40,000. All of these are reusable. When a disaster happens, they come in, they're deployed, they allow a family to get back in a home. When they come back in to reinstall the infrastructure, they package them up, sanitize them, bring them back, and they're ready for the next disaster. And this is actually a concept. We're working with FEMA now, we're working with HUD to try and figure out how we can help those who have been affected by this disaster. So the goal is to take what we've learned through all of our concepts at Virginia Tech and help a family get back on their feet one cartridge at a time. Thank you very much.